So if you guys have been following my channel, you're going to probably be wondering, so what is JKD then? If you don't train with Ted Wong and you train in concepts, which is not a problem, you're probably going to be curious about what am I talking about? So I'm going to talk about JKD in this video, but I'm not just going to tell you or talk about it. I'm actually going to let Bruce Lee show you what JKD is and I'll explain it to you in this video coming up. Stay tuned. All right. So in this, this video right here, where it's a sparring match with Bruce Lee, he is actually performing JKD. He came out to the world sharing JKD at the Long Beach tournament. And here is where he performs JKD. And you have to understand that JKD has no forms. So he doesn't have any kind of form that he is actually presenting. He's actually presenting what JKD is. And he does it by sparring. Because that's what JKD is, is actually a form of fighting, not an art. It's actually a form of fighting. Okay? So don't get me wrong, too. Art is a self-expression of yourself. But as a martial art, now there's actual form. Now there's actual restrictions that you do and you don't. JKD doesn't. JKD is more of a fighting system. So I'm going to explain to you what Bruce is doing in this video so you can understand and see that the entire time JKD was presented here, he was actually doing JKD. So right here, you're going to see Bruce Lee get in his stance. Okay, he's standing. His hand is facing his opponent. So his hand is right here and is facing his target. His stance, this is the JKD stance right here. That back knee bent, that heel raised, and that foot pointed towards the target. This is our JKD stance. Now, he's moving. So, second thing I want you guys to know is he's going to be using footwork. So, he's moving back while his opponent is moving in. He is mirroring his opponent. See that? You see it? And then he goes up for a side kick. While he sees his opponent coming in, trying to attack, he intercepts it. And then he goes back. Now he's got that hand out. Because that hand is like his sword. He talks about JKD is like fencing without a sword. So your hands are now the sword. So still, remember, he's still in his stance the entire time. Footwork, moving back. Okay, he's doing the, he's doing the um, step and slide, a shuffle backwards. And then he's out of range. He's perfectly fine. And then he throws a straight lead. Okay, we're going to talk about that more because the straight lead is actually the backbone to Bruce's JKD. The straight lead. See how he always has that hand up like that? That's his weapon right there. And bam, bam. Now right there, he actually used hand immobilization. So if we go back, he's going to bring this hand to hold this hand down. So watch. He brings that hand up. And then he punches him in the face. And then he's back in his stance. And as his opponent charges, he charges in too. So he goes in as he's attacking. Now back in his fighting stance. And you see that he's pointing his sword towards his opponent's face. Do you see how that is? That is the gun sight theory right there. If he was holding a gun, it would be pointed directly towards his opponent's face. 
that's his sword he's going to be using to fight. So when he extends that arm, it's going to point directly. It's going to come directly to his opponent's face. That's why that is very important. Now, they're both circling. And you see how Bruce Lee circles. And then he punches his opponent and sweeps him. And then he follows it up with a punch to the ground. In a real fight, that would be the finishing blow. Just to finish them off. Now they're back up. They're sparring again. And he's still performing his art. So here, he gets back into his stance. Right? Exact same stance. The on guard stance it is. Moves. And he's mirroring his opponent. You see how he mirrors his opponent? And he lifts up his leg just to stop that kick from coming. And his opponent falls over. He switches leads. But then he comes back in. Bruce just moves his head backwards. Okay, he doesn't move the feet first. He moves the head. Now here, he intercepts and he does a attack by combination. So here, he comes in. He punches, kicks, and then slaps to the face. This is a sparring match, so he's not even going hard. He's just showing you that he could have got that. So that's attack by combination. And here he does a side kick. And then he switch leads where he could have finished the punch, but he decides to hold back. Now, you're probably wondering why he switches leads. The one thing about JKD is that you don't limit yourself from anything. So you're going to be in your right stance. You're going to be in your left stance. It doesn't matter. You got to get good at both. But you get great at one. And that's going to be your strong hand forward. Whichever one is your strong hand. You want that forward because Bruce Lee talks a lot about fencing. Fencing is part of JKD. He talks about fencing without a sword. So if you had no shield and you had a sword in your hand, which hand would you keep it in? You would keep it in the hand that's closest to the target. So you would be keeping it in your front hand. And that's why Bruce Lee, he uses this technique when he fights. See the hand still up? Still pointed directly at them. And then bam! Now here he does a hand immobilization. So... He grabs, he grabs that hand, pulls it down, and then he punches his opponent in the face. Right there. Boom. So fast. And then he stands into his orthodox stance. Now Bruce goes right into a straight lead there. Okay? He punches him right in the face. And then now they're moving, moving. Now Bruce does a high hook kick. So the hook kick is part of JKD. The hook kick is what Taekwondo, if you take Taekwondo, it's going to be a front round kick. But it's not really coming around. It actually goes up and then you turn your hip at the last minute to hit your target. So I'll show you that again later here in a bit. He'll do it again, and I'll show it to you what I mean. There he is. He does it one more time right there. You see how it comes straight up? It doesn't go around. It comes straight up. He calls that a hook kick. So he did a high hook kick there to the face. And then he's moving, moving, using footwork, using his footwork. And then here he does a straight lead to the face. Now he's back in his stance again. And here he does a feint. See how his opponent reacts. Very, very important because people don't throw those very much in the cage or in the ring. 
they faint so that their opponent reacts so they can see what's open, what the guy is missing, or how he reacts to the faint. So he's very smart to see what was open, and then he lands a kick. Now, still in his stance, and then he punches the guy in the face. Right there, high hook kick. And I think this is where he does a, a hook kick. Right there. You see how he comes up with it? He doesn't come out with the hook kick. He comes straight up and then he just kicks his opponent. More direct. Okay, remember, direct. Now he's moving back. And then his opponent sees that. He, he scares him with that feint. Moving back, moving back. You see how he's moving back with that? He's he's bringing his feet back first. Boom! There's the straight lead right there. Let's go back. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it right there. Right here. You see the straight lead. This is what he's talking about when he throws a straight lead. The alignment that he throws it, okay? The feet. Alright. The sharpness, the directness. The alignment is right here. This punch is backed up by this. Everything here is straight. Okay? Just imagine like a pole. If you're going to use that pole to poke someone, if it's bent somewhere, that pole is going to lose power. Okay? It's not going to hit them as hard as if it was straight. Well, that's what he does with his arm here. When he punches someone in the face, his whole body is backing up this punch. So he even pushes off that feet, so he's moving forward to hit his target. There, distance, distance. His opponent can't hit him, and he knows that. Now he moves back. See, he keeps, he mirrors his, his opponent. And right there, another straight. And the hook kick. He waits, waits. And you see how he moves back? He moves that feet back first. That's one of his footwork. And that is the, I call it the lunge step. So he's actually moving backwards with that. He's bringing that foot back so he can shoot his leg back. And then there's another straight. Hits him a little low. And here's a try uh, attempt leg sweep. But the guy moved back. And th these are things that you have to understand in a fight. The guy is not going to stand there for you to do these moves on him. He's going to move left. He's going to move right. He's going to move back and forth. And these are some things that you're just going to have to put up with. So the thing is, how are you going to adapt to it? How are you going to be able to hit your opponent when they move? So here, he's drawing his opponent in. And then there's a hook kick to the face. Now you see how his opponent telegraphs the way he comes in? He tends to shrug down first. And I think Bruce hit him right there. You don't really see it at that angle. But I think that's what happened. And that's why Bruce shrugged his shoulder. Like, uh, it's a sparring match, man. <laughs> and so here we go again. He gets another hook kick. And if you notice, these kicks, these punches aren't as hard. is because they're just sparring. Okay? He's just demonstrating. But in an actual fight, if you're performing in the cage, if you're performing in the ring, these would be a lot harder. They would be a lot more committed. All right? Here it goes. They, they feel each other out, and Bruce does a high hook kick to his head. Now, you could tell there's one thing that Bruce did. 
And what he does was he would try to kick you, but pull back at the last minute. So he would try to like almost hit your ear, but pull his feet back at the last minute. That, that, and that's what he did right there. He almost hit the guy in the helmet, but he pulled his foot back. And that's why he kind of shrugged his shoulder just to let them know, like, I can hit you. And there's a lot of that in these sparring matches that Bruce is performing right here. See, you got completely missed. Now, you see how Bruce is leaning forward, okay? He's leaning forward to get his opponent to misjudge his distance. And look what happens when his opponent misjudges his distance. Watch. He's still leaning forward. His opponent thinks it's safe to get in. Still leaning forward a little. Boom! That's what happens. He reaches back now with his hook kick right to the face. Completely and directly to the face. So a lot of that is the JKD that he was applying in his art. And he was performing it for everybody to see. But for somebody with a naked eye to watch that, you would just think that Bruce was just sparring. He was just showing you how to fight, right? No, not technically, no. He's actually showing you his JKD performance of what JKD is. It's really hard for somebody to actually understand that unless they actually train with somebody who has taught them what Bruce is actually doing in this video. And so a lot of the stuff that Ted Wong talks about comes in there that you actually don't really realize. So that is something that I want to share with you guys, okay? There is so much more in JKD that you guys have not seen, have not really understood. And unless you actually train with Ted, you won't really understand JKD. I am trying to get this stuff out there so that you guys can see that JKD is an actual system. It's, it's all by itself. JKD is an actual art all by itself. It, it's not something that is a concept. All right. It, there is, there is life in this JKD. All right. Not just a concept that you, you throw into other arts. So this is some things that I want you guys to take away. And some things I also want to share with you guys in the future is my fights. And I'll talk about how I applied JKD in my fights. So you guys can see what I did and how I apply these, these material into my fight game so I can defeat my opponents or it, how it helped me defeat my opponents. I hope you guys can stick with me. I would like you guys to have an open mind, even the concept guys, okay? To have an open mind and see this stuff as it is. You can pick and choose whichever JKD you want to do. But this is the JKD that I was taught. And this is the JKD that I used in the cage. And that's how I became a champion. You guys have any questions? You guys know where to put it? Let me know. Uh, and if you guys want to see more, follow me on my YouTube channel. And I hope to see you guys in the future. I'm going to try my best to get stuff out there a little bit more consistently. But um, I hope to do a lot more for you guys. Keep in touch. Hopefully I see you guys in my next video. And you guys stay tuned. Until then, work hard and take care.